Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Northboro. If you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. My day job, I work as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell, next town over in Westboro. But this is not about my day job. It's about my friends Frank and Mary. If you've seen presentations, the seminar presentations that I've done uh, in Northboro and in other communities, I always talk about Frank and Mary and their kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr., Frank and Mary's goal is to live in their house until they die, be buried in the backyard. If you're in Northboro, that means you want to stay here. You don't want to move to Marlboro, where I live. You don't want to move to any of these faraway places, you know, Los Angeles, where your kids are. You want to be in Northboro. So the point of this show is to figure out who the people are that you need to know and what the programs are you need to know about in order to stay right here in Northboro. And Liz Tridiak, who has been a wonderful, the wonderful senior center director who probably many of you have never actually seen. She may actually be totally virtual and made up, but actually no, she's on, honestly really there at the Senior Center a lot. Um, and you'll be able to see her soon, as soon as we all get our vaccine pretty soon. So she ends up finding these great folks to come on to the show and talk to us about in, you know any number of issues that we think are maybe of interest to you and to Frank and Mary. And so Liz, whom do you have today? <laughs> Hi, Arthur. I have with us today um, Jim Priest, who's the Community Relations Director at Whitney Place um, of Assisted Living and Memory Care. So, Jim, welcome. Thanks for uh, joining us today. Thank you, Liz. Happy to be here. Thanks. And I actually know Jim as part of my day job, right? This is That's a, right. And, 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 you know, can vouch for the wonderfulness of the quality of Beaumont and with the Whitney Place the system, you know, in terms of helping a whole lot of people in a whole lot of places. And my co-host in Marlboro, uh, Trish Pope, who's your 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 colleague, right? Yep. Was 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 in at was at at uh, Beaumont for for quite a while, working before she started her job as a senior center director. So, yeah, I'm, I'm she was her. my she was my predecessor, Arthur, and she. Um, the joke is always that they they took a downgrade. They went from Trish Pope to Jim Priest. So. <laughs> That's clever. Oh well, yeah, although she is she is a gem. She she remains she is. She's a gem. <laughs> so Jim, tell us what is it like um, being in your position in this wild pandemic world we have right now? I'm sure it's totally different than anything you've ever experienced. It uh, it really is actually yes um, you know every day is actually different which is which you know everyone wants in their job but not quite different like this <laughs> but uh, um, you know we it, it's funny I, I I give tours still uh, we're we're able to give tours and um, I I find myself saying well in non pandemic times this is what we do yeah. Uh, but we've gotten very creative in how um, how we can keep our residents engaged and how we can keep our family members informed. Uh, we've gotten so uh, so savvy these days with uh, with virtual tours and virtual visits. Uh, even our, our our residents have come to um, come to expect it now, which is um, which is interesting because that's the last thing they used to want to do is to. Uh, anything that had to do with the computer. Um, but it's very, um, we do a lot of, um, a lot of uh, small groups, um, which w that's our mandate. We can only have a certain number of people in our groups and they have to be a certain number of feet apart and, um, and things change. If we do have a positive case, uh, either staff or residents, then uh, or a resident, then things change up. So uh, we try to just keep on top of it. So J Jim, can I just ask? You were just referring to the com the computer based stuff. Yeah. Does does part? I'm just curious. Does part of what you do involve actually teaching any of these? You know, the, the folks that you come there, how to use some of that stuff? Because I bet a lot of folks coming in have studiously avoided <laughs> as I did, you know, and I'm honest, yes. I mean, how many, how many zoom calls did, how many zoom things did you ever do, you know, before right. nine months ago, right? right. And now it's just right. like, it's just part of what you do, you know? It is. Second nature. 
It's yeah. like you just do it. So I'm just curious. Have you have you found yourselves really need to kind of train your folks to, to, to be dealing with stuff like that? Well, mo most of the uh, most of the residents. No, uh, there are a few that, that are savvy and have always been. Uh, but just like just like the general population, there are people that are, are drawn to that and some that are not. Luckily, we have some very uh, savvy recreation folks. So and our company has been very supportive with, um, you know, with tablets and we have tablets on little um, little carts that we take around the little stands on wheels. It's it's oh. we learned a lot from from the first go around. Um, so we so uh, resident family members will call in um, and we'll set them up and we'll wheel it to the to the resident and they just have a nice little chat like we're doing right now. So um, it's really worked out well. And the other thing that's worked out well is um we have a we have an in-house television uh station now um so we can post things uh we could record what we're doing right now and we could you're not put it you're up not on competing with the frank and mary show are you you got your well own you know <laughs> this is we could never do that. that must be why our ratings are getting killed here liz <laughs> it's only in-house so you're uh, safe <laughs> oh my goodness no, Jim, are family members allowed to come into the buildings? Yes, right now they are. Um, we did uh, all through the summer and actually little pop up uh, sessions uh, this fall because we did have some nice weather. Um, we have a tent out back set up um, for uh, family meetings, uh, uh, family visits. Um, but when the uh, weather got bad, then we had to move it inside. Um, and and um, DPH has allowed us to do that now. So, but as you can imagine, there are regulations there too. They have to be escorted up. They have to have the masks on the whole time, as does the resident. They have to be a certain kind of mask. They get temped and they get, uh, they have to fill out a form every time they come. Um, it's a very it's still a very serious process you know we can't let our guard down none of us can mm -hmm. uh, so knock on wood so far we've we've been absolutely outrageously fortunate so and we're happy about that but keeping family and their loved one together is is very important for us we actually we have another one today this afternoon we do town meeting zooms where um, family members call in and they talk to myself, they talk to our executive director and our resident care director. And some of them asked, hey, next time, can can uh, some of the staff be on the call? Because they get really close to the staff as well. As you can imagine, that these are the people that take care of their loved ones. So they get real, real close. So, and we miss them. Yeah, yeah, we miss our families. <laughs> yeah, they become your family. You see them they so do. often, I'm sure. Sure. Once again, one of the interesting things about Zoom is that it has for, for, for the, those who have folks who are living there and who are far away, suddenly, you know, you get to see Ma as much as the, the, the daughter that, you know, lived in Westboro, you know, and yeah. is now going over and suddenly, but you're in San Francisco. So, right. So, yeah. to, to, to some extent, I mean, it, it's it, that part's been really amazing, you know. How yeah. People, Acting that way. Right. Now, by the way, just going back to something you said. So, so at, at this point under your under your current DPH, you know, regs, if a if a if a family member or friend comes in, can they actually go to the room? Except that uh, except that you've got a certain regimen and certainly in terms of masks and stuff. Or do they need right. to only meet people in like common areas? They meet actually in their apartments, oh, that's and cool. so they can only go straight to the apartment and then. They're, they're escorted there and they're escorted away. Right. So at the beginning, we were um, we had to monitor all the visits and, you know, it, it, there goes the privacy. You know, yeah. you can't you can't have a, a an intimate conversation with your loved ones. So um, so this is much better. Um, but we really make it a point. Don't touch anything on the way to and from the apartment. Keep your distance from your mom or dad and wear a mask. So right. and people, and so, people just tend to really struggle, Arthur, actually, without that contact. So we found that it's extremely important. You got to mm -hmm. weigh the, you know, 
weigh the options for them. Yeah. And, I, I'm, this is really an interesting conversation, you know, because <laughs> you've got a lot, you know, we got a lot of folks, I got a lot of folks, you know, or I've got a lot. Well, I guess then I, if you don't mind my asking Liz, I'm just I'm curious about this. So, so we've got a lot. I've got a lot of folks who, of course, are very hesitant, you know, about moving to assisted living because in the early mm -hmm. days there were the, the lockdowns and stuff, you know, and people who were nervous about leaving their house anyway, Frank and Mary, mm -hmm. who were totally not wanting to leave their house. But, you know, you're getting older and maybe somebody fell and, you know, they, they didn't want to be more careful, but they've been putting it off, you know. So I guess from your perspective, have you seen more interest um, at, you know, in, in Whitney Place or in, in the, your assisted living part of your of your of your community over the last few months as things have kind of, you know, felt more comfortable or are people still really kind of nervous about making this kind of move? I'm just curious. Um, we have seen people uh, actually we, it was very slow for a month, I would say, um, as we all tried to figure things out. Uh, and now it is starting to pick up again. I think what, what we're seeing is most of the time people coming in are taking advantage of our memory care program. It's called Tapestry. Um, and we have two neighborhoods of uh, memory care folks in addition to our traditional uh, memory care. I mean, I'm sorry, our traditional assisted living. Absolutely, uh, yeah. So those tend to be the people right now that need the most help. Um, the other people are just sitting back and waiting, I would say. Yeah. And I, and I would suppose this, the memory care folks, especially because they'd be having trouble if they're at home, having anybody come to the house. If they right, could. right. So for them, it might actually be a real improvement from the, the family situation. Th thanks. Mm -hmm. I, didn't mean, yeah. I didn't mean to interrupt, Liz. Oh, I was just going to say we have seen that we that um, some of the home care agencies in the area are having difficulty finding enough workers to fill the home care cases. Right. Um, and people are waiting a little bit longer to get the cleaning that they need, per se. Mm -hmm. um, and this is an interesting anecdote that's related to this. I was in a phone call um, or a Zoom meeting with Chief Parente, who's our fire chief here in Northboro, last week, and he mentioned that the calls to the fire department have gone down, like normal calls for chest pains and falls, things like that. And he wanted me to urge seniors in town, don't be afraid to call for help or call um, the paramedics. Cases are rising here in town, but don't let that um, delay you from getting help still reach out, still call. And I wonder if that's the same people see the cases rising and they might be hesitant to take action or take the step to going to an assisted living or putting mom in memory care. Um, what do you think? Do you think it's based on the rising numbers lately? Well, I think um, for for what I see anyway, I, I think people are tending to um, everyone's. I mean, I know personally, I go to work and I go home. I don't even go in stores. So, I mean, people have their their routines now. Um, what we worry about is is a big a, a big wave coming because um, mm -hmm. people are going to be struggling when you are home alone. Um, and you don't have that social interaction, that stimulation, that's when, as we all know, that's when dementia can kind of take hold. Um, mm -hmm. And then it becomes like a wildfire. So we want to, you know, we, we do want to get people while they're still active and still engaged and uh, still able, still have that cognition um, intact so they can, they can enjoy life a little longer. So could, can you, could you speak a little to that about in terms of what the nature of the programs are that you're able to offer right now, you know, because obviously, as you said, things have really changed. I love the thing with the little cart with the tablet, so you can actually, you can wheel I I know, had your daughter it. Susie around to, to right into your room. <laughs> Here I yeah. am, Mom, right? That's yeah. a great idea. Those, are, those, those have been um, awesome because what, I mean, we can wheel it around to, to a different, um, you know, uh, part of the room even, oh, what do you think? Should I hang this picture here? And, oh, show me a room. <laughs> you know, it, it's 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 more than just a conversation. It's great. Uh, 
So that's that's worked out when people, especially if if we do have people confined to their apartments. Uh, right now, they are able to come down to the dining room. Um, we can only have certain a certain number, so in the dining room at a time, because they have to be socially distanced. So um, so there are multiple um, uh, seatings. Uh, as far as actual activities go, we still do exercise even when they're in their apartments. We either do the exercise through our channel, our in-house channel, um, or we do room to room exercise. Um, but we still have crafts. We still have, um, um, I actually do a social once a month. Uh, it's called Jim's Night In. And we just, we have an absolute blast. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, we sit, we have our wine and cheese and crackers and do that. Uh, but we still have those conversations. We still do you know, you know, our um, our uh, entertainers aren't able to come in in house, but we can have them on the on the channel, um, which is great. And we we have uh, theme movie nights. Um, I have to say that the the number one thing that's come out of all this is the creativity of our recreation department. It has blown us away. So uh, I couldn't be happier about that. That sounds like so much fun. <laughs> it Wine is a cheese. lot of <laughs> So when you say you have an in-house channel, I was assuming that that meant you were doing Zoom to everybody. Are you actually, no. you actually, you've actually got an in-house channel as in like people can click on you like in their little clicker on TV? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so wow. channel, here it's channel three. So so I could go on and, and uh, you know, and, and, and do a show or... Um, most of the time we do like YouTube shows and videos. We do a lot of that. Um, we'll take requests, you know, and we're able to show old shows that they haven't seen in a long time, like Gunsmoke or something like that. And um, and documentaries, there's been a big there's been a big call for documentaries, so that's awesome. And right now it's it's we're gearing up for the holidays, so a lot of holiday shows. So, so oh yeah, that you been, really could start your own variety show. You could actually be. It's like you know, for oh, for people like me, you'd remember like Dinah Shore, you know, yeah, you know, yep. you, you know the yeah. gym, the Chevy Hour, you know. Yeah, great. Right. That's great. Well, yeah, we talked about putting the you know everyone used to have a special, you know, a Christmas special. So we're right. thinking about doing a you know like a a movie thon or whatever the, whatever we would call it, but it would be like the the Christmas special. Uh, like Sonny and Cher's Christmas special or something. Uh, but <laughs> that's the kind of show. I mean, how awesome would that be? So that's the kind of creativity that's coming out of our rec department. I, I, and I love it. I love it. We did, um, we can even do, we do crafts, um, um, but we have to be able to do it. We have to be able to space them out. So we bought individual little tables um, that now that we can, put them around any any room and they can be socially distanced and have their own little table to do crafts. So it it's that kind of stuff that you never thought you'd have to do, but, uh, but the p pandemic is changing a lot of things, I'll tell you. Yeah. For the people who are watching, doesn't that sound like more fun than just being at home? You know, <laughs> I mean, really, you know? I, I was just gonna say, Jim, like, you sound like you're having, despite the circumstances, so much fun over there. And you can tell that you really love your job and you're invested oh God, in it. Yeah. And I'm, I'm <laughs> sure any family member who's thinking about putting their loved one um, or helping facilitate the move to Whitney Place is just so relieved and happy to see that the staff is so engaged. Yeah, I mean, it does. It, it is a relief to folks, I think, to think that, all right. Assisted living is not a nursing home. Assisted living is a place to go. You have your own apartment. You have your own bathroom. You know, you, you, this is your space. You're a little private Idaho. Uh, but then you walk out that door and you have people right outside that can either help you or, or have fun with you. Um, we just recently... Um, decorated every year we've been doing we've been doing this for about five years ever since i took over this role i've been wanting to do this and about actually maybe it was it was about five years ago 
we started putting white lights on all the little trees all around the building. Mm -hmm. So everyone can, everyone both in their apartments in Whitney Place and in their rooms in our Beaumont next door can look out their window and see some white lights. And if yeah. somebody's having a bad evening or whatever, I just take them over to the lights and, and it's glorious. It's awesome. So if anybody wants to come up and drive around our parking lot and see our lights, go on. Yeah, this is going to be the, <laughs> like the old St. Francis de Sales or whatever you go to, like you go to Attleboro and you kind of do a little tour around. Yeah. See the lights. <laughs> it's not quite that overwhelming though. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it's got to be it, it, for you folks too though it's got to be such a relief when you read about the some of the vaccine stuff and you say to yourself oh my god it's going to be over you know you, you know right it, and and for so much of it you know you just keep talking to people and you say you know for people who are talking around thanksgiving saying just don't be stupid right now you know because right. it's almost right. over right. how bad would it be that so and you know grandma died just before the vaccine came out. Well, you know, you just, because yeah. it was so close now, you know? Yeah, 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 that's, I have to say, um, we just uh, we just uh, had a meeting this morning to see how many of our folks are actually going out for Thanksgiving and everyone is staying in for the first wow. time since I've been here, everyone is staying in and we can't make them stay in. But we can make it so wonderful here that they don't want to leave. They want to stay. <laughs> they'll they'll go they'll go to their daughters uh, next Sunday or whatever. But they want to stay for Thanksgiving. So now, Jim, uh, I, as, yeah. as, I met, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, one of my jobs is to kind of well be, provide comic relief, but also keep track of the time. And and we have a few minutes left before we end. Though, Liz, I just wanted to go to you and basically say so from your perspective over the next couple of weeks, right? It's Thanksgiving, there's a few more weeks, mm -hmm. and what we try to do is keep people in touch with what's going on at the Senior Center. Kind of what's happening, is there anything of you know, particular note that people should be interested in, concerned about? Any particular comments during this? Yeah, we have a ton of programs coming up. Our December newsletter is um, coming out within a couple days. We have a lot of, um, fun activities to do, but we also have some nice community service type uh, programs too, where we're doing sand for seniors with the Rotary Club, um, delivering ice melt product to people's homes. We're doing a pen pal program with the high school. We have a friendly voices program for anyone at home who might feel isolated and lonely during this time. We can set up a social call with you. Tons of presentations. We have about 22 classes in some sort of virtual format, either Zoom, wow cable, uh, telephone conference calls. There's something for everyone. So please just give us a call, check out our newsletter, see us online. We have a brand new Facebook page um, and just just reach out, just reach out. We have so much going on. So so Liz, to, to close, can you just once again, just remind people of your phone number and maybe we can ask Jim to remind people of his, right? So that sure. if you want to be at home and you're and but you know you really want to feel close, the senior centers can do it for you, right? Mm -hmm. And if and if you're thinking, you know, maybe home, it's time to rethink home, you know, for whatever reason, Jim can help you out. You know, he's a really friendly. He's like Liz. He's a really friendly guy. <laughs> he really managed to do that, so that you know, it's like you're Frank and Mary, but you're not moving far. You know, I mean, you're really, really not moving far. So, Liz, what's the best number to call you and then Jim? Call us here at the Senior Center at 508-393-5035. Jim. And you can call me at Whitney Place Assisted Living and Memory Care just off Main Street, 508-393-5655. Liz, isn't it great to see another person like you who just really loves what he does? Like, <laughs> she just like totally loves it. Uh, I love it. This is just great. It. So yep. Jim, thanks a million for, for being on the show. Liz, thanks a million for finding, getting and getting Jim to do this. You know, well, thank and you, I'm, Arthur. I, but you know, I think we should try to get onto his cable channel. I think he should, we should try to get an invitation <laughs> to his cable channel. So, I think this is our little step in. <laughs> this could be yeah. could be a step up. A step up. So folks, we hope you enjoy this. Call, call the C call the call Liz, call the senior center. There's a million things going on. 
if you're thinking at some point, you know, it doesn't have to be. If you're thinking at some point that you may have an interest in assisted living because you just don't want to face the snow anymore. This is a good time to think about this. Call Jim. Just look at this place. It is a great way to stay in Northborough, to stay home by, by literally moving down the street. So thank you very much, Jim. Thank you very much, Liz. Happy Thanksgiving to both of you. Happy Thanksgiving Thank to everybody. Too. We're filming this just before Thanksgiving, and we'll look forward to see you seeing you on the next pre the, the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Northbrook. Bye.